Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this moment, Father God, that you are blessing us right now. Father God, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help, I know this morning, Father God, if thou withdraw thyself from me, oh, where thou shall I go? Father God, we see that it is another time you blessed us. You allowed us, Father God, to come back into your house of prayer one more time. For that, Father God, I say thank you. Realize it, Father God, that it was not that we were so good, but we know, Father God, that you are great. You are merciful. And you allowed our golden moments to roll on just for a little while longer. We say thank you. And now, Father God, we... As we enter into your gates this morning, Father God, with praise and into your courts with thanksgiving, we say thank you again. If we had 10,000 tongues, Father God, we just could thank you enough. But Father God, we ask you now just to be one in the midst this morning as we praise your holy and your righteous name. Search all of our hearts, Father God. Anything that is unclean, Father God, remove it. Cast it out, that seal of forgiveness. Oh, Father God, we thank you. Now, Father God, we ask you now to bless this church, bless our membership, bless our visitors and friends. And, Father God, most of all, don't forget about our pastor, one who's been teaching and preaching, Father God, and showing us your way, Father God. Continue now to bless him with a special blessing. Bless his family, Father God. Or they can continue, Father God, to live a prosperous life and continue, Father God, to be that light that we can see here on earth, pointing the way to you. We thank you now, Father God, for all you've done for us, all you are doing, and all you want to do. Bless us as a church family, and bless us individually, Father God. Father God, everything that we you see that we we want, Father God, if we just delight ourselves in you. You say you will give us the desires of our hearts. We pray now, Father God, that this will come to fruition. Now, Father God, we, we all have been said and all has been done. We can't call upon your holy and your righteous name, Father God. We ask you to forgive us, Father God, for all of our sins. Sins, Father God, by commission and sin. Oh, Father God, we know that if you do that for us, Father God, everything will be all right. Oh, Father God, we thank you again this morning for our Sunday school teacher, Father God. And we pray, Father God, that those who are not coming to Sunday school, that they, you will print their hearts, Father God, and change their minds and let them come in and hear your word, Father God, ask questions and get answers. Oh, we thank you for that, Father God. We thank you for that. And now, Father God, Come down to the end of my room. Keep singing praises to your holy and righteous name. Please, Father God, give me a home. Not only me, Father God, but all of those who are wobbling in weak voice. All of those, Father God, that has accepted your son, Jesus Christ, as their personal Savior. Give us a home, Father God, in your kingdom. This is my prayer I ask in the name of Jesus. And let the church be. We can make some noise in this house, amen. Woo, woo, woo. The song that we get ready to say is that I just want to praise you for all that you've done for me. Anybody really want to praise you for all that the Lord has done? If I was to name one or two things this morning, I'm sure I know all y'all can agree. He woke you up this morning. So y'all should have made some noise right there. He woke you up this morning. Yeah. Y'all act like y'all scared to say amen. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your brand new day. I mean, do this right here for me. See, y'all got the use of the activities up your lips. <laughs> you can wear your hand this morning. Come on, let's give God some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Oh, 
Come on, give God a hand, clap of praise, and tell him thank you. Come on and tell him thank you. The reason, the reason that I know that it won't work is because it didn't work. He tried it. They were formed against me, but it didn't work. And I, I can go on, if I go on and let y'all know right now, it ain't working right now. <laughs> Those same weapons that are formed against us, listen, it ain't working. And if we can look at the future, it won't work. All you got to do is trust in him. Put your trust in him. And you are, I tell you, he is a protector. I mean, he's a, uh, he's a protector for all of us that love him. And that's what I like about him. That's why I serve him. That's why I give him my all because he watches out for us. He, he, I mean, he, he announces trouble before trouble gets to the house. It won't work. There is no weapon. But mind you, weapons will be formed. The enemy will attack. But guess what? It won't work. <laughs> Amen. Go under your mask, tell yourself it won't work. Amen. It won't work. You need to type that in the chat box and it won't work. He tried everything. He tried his best to take me out. But it sure won't work. Thank you, Desmond. I think, thank you, Desmond, for putting it in there. It won't work. You tried it. He tried it. But amen. And he got, amen. It just won't even, won't even work. Amen. We praise the Lord today. Thank you for the, those of you that are joining us in our virtual congregation. We thank God for you. Amen. Hope that you are praising God along with us. Amen. It's, it's another day that the Lord has granted unto us. And, and, and guess what? You got to make a conscious decision that even though the bills are stacked high, even though trouble is around the house, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be, even with my mask on, my lips can still give him praise. What a worthy God we serve. What a worthy God we serve. We, we thank those who are joining us. Amen. Who joined us? Thank you for Milton Jackson. Say it won't work. Amen. It won't work. Try, devil tried it, but it won't work. Uh, I know that's right. I know that is right. Amen. Thank you all for joining us. Push the push the push the button, the share button, share the service with someone else. Amen. A comment, like us, say something to us, shout with us, whatever, whatever, you, whatever you decide to do. We are just glad that you are in the number one more time, and especially for those who have gathered here in this room today. Thank God for thank God for you, and thank God for your obedience, and amen, listening to the urshers and doing those things that we ought to do to be saved. And we thank God for that. And listen, May is this is we're deep in the month of May, and May May is this birth month time, and a lot of folk going to May. Uh, we, we thank God for you, but. I just want to do a shout out, if y'all don't mind, to Miss Sister Rosa Mo. I heard she had a birthday. Amen. Y'all need to, whatever y'all think y'all going to put it in that chat box. Amen. Y'all to tell Sister Rosa Mo happy birthday. She's done exceeded those blessings that God has, has promised. Uh, three score and ten, she's exceeded that, and that's enough to be uh, pray enough to be, be thankful to God for it. Thank you, Sister Lenora Thomas, who was over in Virginia Beach and something uh, commented in the text box. And, uh, thank you for joining us in the, in this service today. Uh, all the rest of those May birth month people, we wish you all a happy and happy birthday. Hope that you enjoy your day. Amen. And you know, sometimes you have to sing with some folk out. Uh, we're getting ready for graduation. I didn't have a list of the names. Still don't have a complete list of the names. Y'all, excuse me. I gotta say, I gotta say, thank God for Sister Donisha Kelly. Amen. Amen. I mean, y'all, excuse me, Doctor Donisha Kelly. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Y'all do know I take responsibility for a lot of that. Amen. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm her other daddy. Amen. 
praise the Lord. So we thank God for, for that and all those persons who make great achievements. Uh, we thank God for you as well. That's a, it takes a lot of work, but everybody got a DR in front of that and didn't do the work. Uh, but when you do the work, it's earned. You all, somebody ought to say thank you. And we appreciate appreciate what uh, God is doing in her in her life. It's voting season, and of course, uh, naturally from this pulpit, I do encourage you to vote. I uh, can't tell you who to vote for, but uh, I do have some opinions every now and then. Uh, but this go vote early voting is uh, start. It's already started, but this week you can do it every day. Uh, this full week you can early vote in Burke County at the old courthouse. Uh, you can vote there on that corner. Go ahead and do your early vote. Don't wait the next two. It might storm. Amen. Go on and get it out of the way and make sure that you get your vote in. Uh, in Augusta, you can vote. There are four different locations that you can vote, including Diamond Lakes and Vernon Ward and Warren, Warren Road, and, of course, at the at the municipal building as well. So there's no excuse for us. I mean, it's, it's been a major turnout already, but let's make the devil real bad and vote like we've never voted before, amen, to make a difference in this. It's one of the ways you can take a stance for, for things that you think you don't have no control over when you get behind that curtain and push that button, amen. You, you better know that it is making a difference, amen. We're just grateful. We're grateful for the, for the North Ark Church family, grateful for all of you that have shared uh, with us and all the good things that are going on here. And let me just uh, thank God for those givers, those persons who are, we have some consistent givers, some people probably you all have not seen in two years, but it's not a week that goes by that they're not dropping their finances in the box, uh, in the mail, amen, and, and they have their reasons for not having gathered, but listen, that, that we are grateful for all of you here, and all of you that have come out, but even especially those folks even folk that's out of town, you wouldn't believe that people are consistently making their make, making their connection with the church. Amen. Staying connected. And that's why I encourage you to, whatever you do, even in this pandemic, stay connected. Stay connected to the church. Don't, 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 don't drift. Don't let the devil drift you away from that. And one of the ways you can do that, of course, is with watching us on virtual, on the virtual platforms, as well as making your contributions or your paying your tithes and your offerings uh, by way of Givelify and of course Cash App. Uh, you, know, you can go on the website and give you those those destinations or you could drop it in the mail or just want to drive out sometime and right look at the building. You can come by and drop that in the in the in the door over on the side. Amen. But thank God for that. We're glad, it's good to be in the number. One more time. We're going over to uh, the Brown Grove Church to celebrate with them at one o'clock today. Uh, that 142nd church anniversary. Uh, we'll be there with them at 1 o'clock. A few of you all may want us to come. Uh, I, when we accept those invitations now, we let them know that it ain't going to be a, a whole bunch. We'll bring some. Uh, but uh, and when I do act, I ask the question, are y'all practicing got CDC guidelines and masks uh, before I accept those, those invitations like that? So they are doing that as well as the Good Shepherd Baptist Church. We start revival there tomorrow night for three nights, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Uh, in order to come to that one, you need to go online to the Good Shepherd, Good Shepherd uh, website and register uh, to come. So they're practicing all the guidelines as well. And then on the third Sunday in June, we'll go over with Richmond Hill Baptist Church for their church anniversary as well. Uh, but it's good to just kind of start the little fellowships all over again and it won't ever be the same, but it will be uh, something that we can offer unto God. Let's send our prayers out to our deacon, Deacon Oliver Frazier, who's getting some rest over at the VA hospital. We, we're going to keep him in our prayers along with the Frazier family and all the rest of those that are that are going through uh, their ordeals, their times of storm right now. We lift our prayers and our voices up to God on your behalf. Amen. Our sermon today has come from a psalm. Uh, Psalm 11, amen, uh, Psalm 11, amen, Psalm 11 is a powerful psalm that I want to look at today that we can get some, uh, some encouragement from, uh, Psalm 11 in your Bible, I'm reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible, of course, uh, it simply says this uh, in 
Psalm 11, beginning with verse number one. It says, I trust in the Lord for protection. So why do you say to me, fly like a bird to the mountains for safety? The wicked are stringing their bows and fitting their arrows on the bowstring. They shoot from the shadows at those whose hearts are right. Foundation of the law and order have collapsed. Wow. The foundations of the law, of law and order have collapsed. God, why did you send me that email? The foundations of law and order have collapsed. What can the righteous do? But the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord still rules from heaven. He watches everyone closely, examining every person on earth. The Lord examines both the righteous and the wicked. He hates those who love violence. He will rain down blazing coals and burning sulfur on the wicked, punishing them with scorching winds. For the righteous Lord loves justice. The virtuous uh, will see his face. Amen. I just want to look at that psalm, and I want to call my little sermon, Standing Steadfast in Shaky Situations. Standing Steadfast in Shaky Situations. And I, I really wanted to say something to do it, and it's probably going to pop up because it's in my spirit, how to stand fast, steadfast in shady situations. Amen. God, we thank you now for preaching. We thank you for allowing us to stand behind this sacred desk. Our prayer now, God, is that you will use this vessel of clay, these lips of dust. Use us for your glory. Anoint us afresh, undergird us with your Holy Spirit. But God, always remind us of that grace that is sufficient. Now, God, we pray that you would let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength, and you are my redeemer. It's in the precious name of our Savior and Lord that we pray. Amen. Amen. Standing steadfast in shaky situation. Most of you probably have heard that old adage, uh, and it's attributed to Alexander Hamilton, and it says, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. I heard about three people re re remember that. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. And they extend that out. They, they extend that out to say that those who stand for nothing, guess what? Fall for anything. And when you stand for nothing, you will fall for everything. And I think most of you all will agree with me that uh, when I say that we are living in a time of moral decline, I think you will agree with me that that's the status that we're in in our present society. I mean, listen, in our very own presence, as we are, as we are living this life, we are seeing wrong being called right. It's called gaslighting. Right being called wrong. The standards of morality are, are being lowered to, to the beliefs of those who are in the majority, regardless of the biblical standards that have been set before us in the Bible. Uh, personally, on a personal level, the, the enemy is attacking uh, you as believers, us as believers, at the very core of who God designed us to be. He's attacking. He's attacking our families. He's attack, attacking our ministry, our marriages, our children. And, and, and we are all under personal assault as well as our society being under that same moral assault. I, I love the Psalms. Y'all know I love the Psalms because, because what the Psalms will do, they'll help us in times of trouble and 
and it, it, it'll help us. In, even in our times of great joy, we can find a, a psalm that can encourage us and encourage us. Even when we are discouraged, there's a psalm that will encourage us. And listen, it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, black, white, or purple. It doesn't matter. There are, there are some situational psalms that you can identify with as believers to encourage your hearts in almost every situation in life. You name it, there's a psalm that will encourage you uh, along this walk with the Lord. And, and I like Psalm 11 because when, when David writes Psalm 11, he's under the persecution of, 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 the, of King Saul who sought his life and, 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 and hunted him as, a, as, a, as, as what the text says in the King James Version, as a partridge upon the mountains. His, his, David had some friends like, like we have, uh, some, some, some family members like we have. He had some shady friends. He had some of those friends. And, and, and guess what? They, they, they were scared for David's well rightness, so they were afraid for his life. And they suggested to David, rather than standing up to the enemy, David, why don't you run to the mountain? Run to that, that hiding place. You know you have a hideout up in the mountains. Go on to the mountains. Don't hide in the cave somewhere, David. Don't, don't, don't confront your friends. Run and hide, David. The friends knew that Saul was enraged. They knew that he was enraged and wanted to kill David and didn't think that David stood a chance against the great king and all of his army. But, but listen, we'll see that as, as, as David, that, see that David being strong in his faith he was, we all know that he's a man after God's own heart. He rejected the idea or the suggestion that was coming from his friend. And David was determined, watch this, David was determined to, to stand, but he would stand by putting all of his trust in the God of the Bible. Yeah, he said, I, I, he says, and listen, because of the times we live in, because of the times we live in and the attack on the morality of our society and our families and our personal lives, the beliefs that we, the beliefs that we stand on. I wanted to preach my little sermon to remind us that we have got to stand for right. Whew. We've got to stand for what's right, especially when we know what the Bible teaches. I know I'm fundamental. I may be fundamental and old-fashioned, but I, I just believe the Bible is the, the Bible is the inspirational word of God. It changes not, and we cannot change the Bible. We can't change definitions of words in the Bible. We've got to stand on what the word of God says. Mm. I got three shout-outs. Three, I heard three horn blown. Uh, but, but listen, but listen, listen after, 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 after hearing about this Psalm 11, I, I wanted to call this sermon standing steadfast on the, on the, on the, in, in shaky situations because when we look at these little seven verses, there are only seven verses in the Psalm, it's, it's called the poetic li literature. Sometimes they're called poems. Listen, it's evident that the first three verses that David, just read those first three verses, you'll see what David makes a conscious decision to stand. He makes a conscious decision to stand while verses 4 through 7, he depends on God's promises, watch him, to advance him in the warfare. He learns that there are times when you have to stand steadfast even in shaky and shady situations. Uh. So, so my, my first little lesson, I ain't but two, ain't, ain't but two points in the, in the sermon today, ain't but two points. In the, the first one is this, is you got to make a decision to fight and not flee. Sometimes you got to make a decision to, to fight and not flee. Listen, listen, right there. He said, I would, they, they done told him all this. David said, I would trust in the Lord for my protection. So, so, so why don't you say to me, fly, why are you telling me to fly like a bird to the mountains for safety? Why are y'all telling me the wicked are stringing their bows and fitting their arrows on their bowstring or pointed toward me? They, they, they shoot for the shadows of, of those whose hearts are right. Because he's right there after him, the foundations of the law and order have collapsed. That's what those first three verses say. Listen, when we're faced with our position of danger, listen, healthcare professionals would tell you that automatically our, the natural reaction of our bodies is to do three things. We will either fight, flee, or freeze. That's medical, that's medical, that's, that's psychological term, uh, psychology terminology because it, it's a stress response that, that helps us react 
to whatever that perceived threat might be. And like a, whether it's a car coming or a dog growling, the response usually causes, causes our hormones to act up and tells us the right things to do. It causes physiological changes in our bodies, and these changes allow us to act quickly to, to, to tell us what's the best way to protect yourself in that, in that situation. So, 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 so this idea about flight or fight or flight, it's an active defense response where you fight or flee. That's pretty easy to figure out. You either fight for what's right or you run. And listen, there are sometimes, David will tell you in other texts that there are sometimes you do have to flee and regroup. But, but listen, in this situation, Something was going on that was against the standards of the Bible. There were some principles involved, and David makes a decision to, to fight rather than flee. And then he says, ah, if, if freezing, freezing is, if what, you know what freezing is? Freezing is fight or flight on, on, on pause. I mean, whether you, whether you get ready to decide whether you're going to uh, run to protect yourself or stay there and fight. And that, that's because you want to act appropriately. My little sermon today is talking about these situations where we know it's a godly principle involved and you decide to stand for what's right. Uh, when, you, when you read these first three verses in this 11th uh, Psalm, it, it, it's clear that the choice David takes against the threats of the enemy, he says, I won't freeze and I won't flee. David says, uh, he, David says I'm going to fight, but I ain't going to be fighting by myself. He said, in the Lord, I will put my trust. Or rather, he's saying, in the Lord, uh, uh, in the Lord, I find my refuge. And he, he, he's talking about this. Uh, and what David is really saying, I'm really not going to fight. The Lord's going to fight for me. That's why you can stand up for what's right. Sometimes you ain't got to say nothing. God will handle that thing for you. I, I wish I had somebody can identify that that God would do it for you. Listen, you got to understand, David. David, David, David you, can't, you can't forget that David is an experienced warrior. He's an experienced soldier. I mean, he, will, he, he, he is well acquainted with maneuvers and strategies of, of armed fighting, of withdrawal and retreating. But, but that was not what his counselors were advising him to do. God's work and God's glory were at stake. The glory of God was at stake, and David says, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to fight this. He said, and I will not abandon my post while I'm on duty for the Lord. How? He said, hey, how y'all How y'all telling me to shut up and stop preaching about that? How y'all telling me to stop? Don't, don't bother that. Don't address that. Leave that issue alone. How, why are y'all telling me to flee like a mountain? Going back to going back to town. Don't 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 uh, pastor. Don't bother with that. But 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 David was disturbed by the natural influences of his friends' words. Can I tell you? There's nothing more plausible or subtle than than our 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 ability and our natural proneness to retreat on issues that we know are right. Because we say stuff like we stay say stuff like. If you can't say nothing good, don't say nothing at all. You might as well go on and say something bad then. You might as well go on and agree with what's bad. If you're going to take that stance on something that you know is right, no, I'm just not going to say anything. Well, you might as well agree with what's going wrong, whatever the wrong is. Now, listen, I'm, 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 I'm just saying, you, you got this. What, but listen, you got to understand there's, there you have the option in that's those situations of sacrificing your personal safety or protecting the principle that we know is right. You, you have, the, you have the, the, the option of losing some friends or some family folk or some church folk. You have that option. You have that option of protecting what's right or losing something personal. And sometimes it's better to lose some stuff personally if you're going to stand for right. I wish I had a shouter in here. Because sometimes you got, sometimes you, if you let that wrong hang around you too long, misery loves company. You're going to be misery with the company. And you're going to buy into the wrong that they're doing. Be careful of the company that you keep. That's why the psalm, it says in, the, in verse number two, the wicked are stringing their bows and fighting their, their arrows on bow springs. They, they shoot from the shadows at those whose hearts are right. Notice, they're not shooting at the wrong. 
They're shooting at those whose hearts are right. So if you've never been attacked, if, if you've never been attacked by the bowls of the enemy, that might mean, I didn't mean to go there, but I mean, listen, you got you to understand that you got to understand that David is in imminent danger for his life. He's a warrior king, who, uh, 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 anointed king, just hadn't had to take the office yet. Uh, and he'd been informed that the bulls, were, listen, they are shooting at you. They're looking for you. But watch this, how, 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 he, how he know the issues of state. Listen, Jesus himself always spoke and acted on principle and not how folk felt about him. He, he told his disciples at one time, he said, save yourselves by flight. But at another time to remain on your post, even at the cost of losing your life or your livelihood. He told them to determine, determine that line of conduct not by because of the consequences to themselves, but by the consequences to the cause for which they were identified. How can you be identified as a Christian when you are hanging around mess all your life? I don't hear no horns blowing on the right hand side. Listen, David, he's fled before. There's some other time that he fled uh, uh, before his persecutors got, got, got to, because he got started like, but, but, but the time has come and he says, well, I done run long enough. It's time for me to take a stand. And I'm going to take a stand and I'm going to stand for what's right, but I'm going to put my trust in the Lord. I like this lesson. I like this lesson in Psalm 11 for, for us in the day and the times we're living in because we're experiencing the enemy's attack every angle that he's coming after us. He's coming after the church. Uh, he's coming after the church. He's, and even for some of us, he's attacking us individually. And look like to me, it just seems like the righteous ones, just we don't want to become involved. We want to sit on the sidelines. We want to, we want to, we, we complicate our lives if we get involved. We don't want to say nothing about what is right. We don't want to talk about some of these folk running for office when we know that they ain't, they ain't fit for office. We want to just be quiet and say nothing. Somebody's got to say something. But, but the priority of personal deliverance seems to be the, all that matters. Whatever matters is what you got to speak up about. Listen, the possibility of sacrifice or standing for right is the furthest thing from a lot of our minds. We just, we got this little thing, we go along to get along. Y'all heard that one before. I'm just, I just, I don't want to start no stuff, but baby, you stand for right and, and fool the Lord wrong will come to where you are and make it right. Uh, we don't go along just to get along. All that matters is a hideout in the mountains where we can go into our little places and our corners and hide and don't say nothing where we can escape any demand that is made of us. David makes this decision to fight and putting his trust in the Lord. Listen, this ain't the first time David has made that decision. He's had to do this over and over again. But my brothers and sisters, his friends thought that they thought like some people today because the odds seem to be against us. We decide not to engage because it looks like the battle cannot be won. We decide not to fight at all. We decide not to say anything because it seems like it's more of them than it is of us. <laughs> I, I, I just got it. But I thought the Bible says, uh, he says, greater is he that's in you. <laughs> than, he, than, than they that are in the world. I don't care how many is against it. Listen, you might not win it, but you got to say something. They might vote you out, but you still ought to say what's right. They might not like who you like, but you got to stand for what's right. You got to learn to be steadfast in these shaky and shady times. That's why the Bible says, and if the mountains, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Listen, you might not, you might want to look to the people of, listen, look at, somebody said this is in Sunday school. Thank you, Sister Walker. You helped me out today with my little sermon because if you think about those folk over there in the Ukraine, listen, they're going up against the second power of the world, the second military power of the world. They are outnumbered by guns and bombs and tanks and ammunition and all of that. This was supposed to be like a two-week war. 
And now they've been there for all going on four months. Because these folk, the Ukraine men, have made a decision, said, Mama, daughter, wife, y'all gone over there to Poland, but we're going to stand here. And we're going to fight for our country because we love our country. We might die doing it, but I don't care. We're going to stand. And, listen, and, and, and the Russia don't know that they done run into a bus or a bee nest or a hornet's nest because these folk are fighting like they ain't never fought before. Can I say some Christians need to do the same thing? We got to stop worrying about how many folk are against us. How many folk believe that mess that's against the Bible? We got to stand for what's right. And if we keep on fighting, we'll destroy some of the strongholds of the enemy. But we'll never tear down a stronghold if we don't stand for what's right. If we go along to get along, we've got to stand. You got to stand for what's right, baby. You got to stand for what's right. Don't, I don't care if it's your own children, your grandchildren, whoever it is. You, don't, you, you can love them, but you got to stand for what's right. All right, uh, uh, let me skip over that. I got too much more stuff on that. Uh, let, me, let me just go on to give you my second thing so yeah, we can go home. We, we got to get some turkey wings when we get there. But, but listen, uh, uh, he, says, he says you got to, you got to make a decision in, a, in principal situations. You got to make a decision to, to, to fight and not flee and not freeze. Then those next four verses, it helps us out with this one little point here. And I'm going to get out of here because uh, the lesson has been taught, I think. He, you, you got to move forward. You got to advance in, in combat. You got to in, uh, advance in your stance moving forward, but you got to depend on, watch this, you got to depend on the promises of God. These last four verses, where, where he said, you know, he, it just these last four verses are tied to the very first verse where he says, In the Lord I put my trust. Can I tell you God's program and God's plan for our lives for, is, is for spiritual advancement. If we're going to mature as a church and we're going to continue to be a church that the Lord is pleased with, if we're going to be the Christians that God can use in battle, we got to understand that we fight better because when, we know, uh, that, that when we know we have the presence of the Lord, when we have the, God's presence in the battle. That's why, he says, that's why he says that in the verse number four, the Lord is in his holy temple. Come on, somebody. He's, what he's really saying is God is everywhere. God is omnipotent. God is, God is omnipresent. God is in the holy temple. And he's, he's in his holy temple. And he still rules. Watch this from heaven. I don't care what's going on in the world. God is still in charge. God, I, I'm crazy enough. I'm old-fashioned enough to believe that, that God is still in control. He's still painting the picture. He's still he's doing what he does best in, in order to, to stand. Watch this. You got to accept and acknowledge that there is nothing more important than the knowledge of knowing that God is with you. Uh, and when you face, uh, when, when face, when you face with those impossible assignments, like getting through a pandemic, get through, get through all of this stuff that we are dealing with, when you get that impossible assignment of leading the children of Israel through their willingness to journey, Moses was in that situation. Moses said, if your presence don't go with me, he said, Lord, I ain't going. God, if you don't go with me, I ain't going at all. And y'all, we got to make that same decision. We got to say, I'm not, I, God, if you don't stand with me, I'm not going to stand in shaky times. I'm going to, I need you here. Guess what? He said that. That's what, when God got ready for Joshua to move on, the Bible says, Joshua said, the, God says to Joshua, no one will be able to stand against you. Watch this. As long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or, or abandon you. Be strong. And courageous. That's what God needs. He, God, God is sick and, I mean, he's puking out the mouth at lukewarm Christians. Lukewarm because we won't stand. Uh, you're neither hot nor cold. And God says, I just want to spit you out of my mouth. I want to get rid of that. But, but, but when, even when Jesus was, when he called his disciples to go into the world to preach the gospel, guess what? He concluded, guess what he concluded? Guess what we can stand on? We can stand on this because he tells us, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Listen, God will not abandon us when we stand for what's right. God will be there for us. Even Paul had the same idea when he was in prison after being forsaken by all men. Paul could declare to Timothy, he says, but the Lord stood with me. 
I can look back over my life and I think there's some folk in this room right here and even those in the virtual congregation can say I can look back over my life and I can tell you it was God who brought me through. It was God who got me through. It was, it was God who gave me the strength so that I, Paul says, so that I might preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. It was God that brought me through the pandemic. It was God that got me through those struggles in my life. It was God who got me through the foreclosure and the financial difficulties in my life. It was God who got me through all the health crises that I've been in. Nobody but God. I'm glad I took the pill. I'm glad I took the medicine. I'm glad I had the surgery. I'm glad I went through the procedure. But can I tell you something? It was nobody but God. It was nobody but God that brought me out of that thing. It was because the devil said it was coming back on you. But I'm glad to God. God said the devil is a liar. Yeah, I, I had my hands of healing on you. And it shall not return. That's what Paul said. I can preach the good news for in this entirety, all of the Gentiles. And he rescued me from the certain death. And that's what God has done for us. And I can tell you, as long as you know you have the presence of God, it makes the battle a little easier to fight. When you know you have, when you know you have some backup, it makes it a little different. Uh, when you go into battle, I, I went, I went to a little, little all-white college down in Lagrange, Georgia, and the first two years I was down there, I was about as scared as I can be. Y'all turned out, I, I can't say the concept on Facebook. I was scared of white people because <laughs> I ain't never seen them when I was growing up. They, they ain't come on Roselle Street. They had these big white boys with the big old beards and stuff. And I'm going like, man, I'm staying in my room. Two years I did that. With my in my junior year, they brought a, a, a basketball player on the on the on the campus. He's six seven, two seventy, and he fell in love with me, and we we became the best of friends still talk. So everywhere I went, Floyd went with me. First two years, I was kind of wimpy, Mike. So, but when Floyd came, when Floyd was with me, I got a little more aggressive. Had a little bit more mouth. Because I had the presence of Floyd. I ain't got to say much more. When you know you have the God of the Bible. When you know you got El Shaddai. Jehovah Nisi and Jehovah Jireh. And Jehovah Nisi. But when you, when you know you got God with you. I can tell you, you can, you can be a little bit more aggressive. You can talk a little louder because you know that God is on your side. Uh, you can stand strong against the devil and the wickedness knowing that the God of the Bible is walking with you. Knowing that he is in your presence. And not only that, you can do it and you can, because he's proven his power before. Because the Bible says he's the Lord, the Lord's throne is in heaven. But watch what the Bible says. His eyelids try the children of men. In other words, God is looking down on us when we decide to stand for what's right. And what the text really means when it says his eyelids try the children of men. What he's really saying when you really want to see something, you have to squint your eyes a little bit. Close your little lids and so you can see a little further. And what the text is really saying, God is squinting his eyes and he's looking down on us when we decide to stand for what's right. And he says, the Bible says, nothing in all creation is hid from the Lord. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. And he is the one who we are accountable to. We are not accountable to no politician. You are not accountable to even to your own pastor. But who you are accountable to is the God of the Bible. So we find God say he's tried the righteous. I say he's tried us and sent us through the fire. And thank God we came through as pure gold. Because he 
is the one because he examines, watch this, he examines the righteous and the wicked according to verse number five. And he says he hates those who love violence. In other words, he says you ain't got to pick up your fists. You ain't got to get no WR50. You ain't got no got to get a 15 or a Glock. You ain't got to go to the top or grocery store and shoot up nobody. He said, don't worry about it. I'll fight your battle. I'll stand and fight your battle. And y'all want to see somebody who stands. I don't know what the man's name is. I don't know who he is, but in that little shooting that took place on yesterday up in Buffalo, New York, I want to meet and know something about the security guard because he was on duty all by himself. And all of a sudden, here come a man with artillery dressed in uniform and and bulletproof vest and they said the, he was on the outside shooting and the security guard made a decision to run on the inside he ran from that time from the one that was shooting in other words he decided to flee at the moment because that's what his hormones told him to do but the bible that the, the story goes on to say but the man went on the inside the security guard went on the inside he could have ran out the back door but he made the decision that if he come in here he's gonna have some trouble on his hands and here comes the shooter coming into the store and the story goes that the security guard begins to shoot at the man he says i decided that i'm gonna stand for what is right if i gotta lose my life and here he is a hero right now because he lost his life standing up for what's right if he hadn't done what he did yesterday that would be more than 10 people dead can i tell somebody who hears me right now that you need to understand that you might save somebody's life by saying what's right you might lead somebody to Christ by standing for what is right you might help somebody get out of the out of the narrow path and lead them to the straight the straight gate you might lead them to Christ by saying the right thing at the right time and what I'm trying to tell the church is you got to understand understand that there is power in the presence of God but the text says in verse number seven and I'm about to get out of here because I'm feeling a little happy I'm feeling like standing for right I feel like preaching for right I feel like saying what God wants me to say and not to tickle the ears of the people but I'm glad that when you got the presence of God and you know the power of God all you want to do is try to please God for the righteous lord he loves justice and watch this he says and the virtuous will see his face in other words if you do it right you're gonna see the face of god and i like that about god because jesus bought into the program when he says blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god and i wanted to report to some baptist folk today that the bible teaches us that in order to enjoy the heaven heavenly vision that God has given unto us we must know holiness in our lives there's something called holiness that we try to run away from but the Bible says without holiness no man can see God you ought to make up to yourself and put in the comment box I'm holy and I'm glad to be holy because I know the Holy One and as long as he's holy I'm gonna live holy and that's what he will say because that's what Jesus did he stood in some shady times and he stood in some shaky times and that's why God was able to look down on Jesus and said this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased when was the last time you heard God say that when you did what he wanted you to do the enemy didn't like it but you heard God pat you on the back and said well done that good and faithful servant you heard him said this is my beloved daughter who spoke up for me when nobody else would he said this is the one and I'm glad today that I want to live to please God so can I make a public service announcement as I go to my seat I want to tell you you ought to live trying to please God stop trying to please 
answer those folk around you. You got to please God. Do what God wants you to do and God will turn it around for you. I say he will. I say he'll make your enemy his footstool. I say he will. I say oh, he'll make those who who know who got it were against you. One of these days they'll have to come back to you because he is that kind of God. Is there one person in the room today that can testify to the fact that I'm glad that I stood for what's right. I lost my money. I lost my house. I lost my marriage. I lost my friendships. But I'm glad that I stood for right because now I'm receiving the blessings of the Lord. And now because I can feel God, the blessings just keep on coming because I'm speaking God, I made up in my mind that I'm going to live for him come hell or high water. I got to live for him because I want to see his face. I got to see his face. I want to see him face when he said, well done, thy good and faithful servant. They didn't say amen, but you kept on preaching. They didn't praise you, praise me, but, but you kept on preaching. They got a little upset at you, but you kept on preaching. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. I just want to say, stay on the battlefield. Don't give up. Stand for what's right. You might lose. You might lose loved ones. You might lose friends. But just know that you are standing for what's right. Stand for what's right. And God will do the rest. He'll, he'll bless you. Stand for what's right. That's all he's looking for. How do you know what's right? What's right is in the book. It's in the Bible. And listen, and guess what? Here it is. There's great joy. There's great joy when you know you did what was right. <laughs> when you know you did what was right, guess what? You can go to sleep at night, lay on that Sealy Postropedic mattress and that double down pillow and take yourself to sleep because you did what you knew was right. It's getting shaky. We're living in a shaky world. They're asking us to go along with all kinds of stuff. But even if you're by yourself, if you're the only one that says no, say no. If you're the only one that says yes, say yes. That's all God requires of us. That's why we serve him. That's why I love him. And that's why he cares for me. Come on, tell God, thank you. God, we thank you now for this Psalm 11. We thank you. Thank you for opening this up to us for this season that we're living in. This season of discomfort, this season of discouragement, this season where they are telling us what we see is not what we see. They are telling us what we hear is not what we hear. But we know what you say. We know what your word says. Thank you for opening our eyes. God, we know that our growth and our maturity sometimes has to go through the path of standing for what's right. Bless these worshipers today. Bless every ear that has heard this message not for academic learning but God that it may change our behavior and remind us of who we are reminding us that you are with us always promise never to leave us and never to forsaken us thank you God for being our God bless us now is our prayer it's in Jesus name we pray 
Amen. There may be somebody who have not accepted Christ into your life, and you're in virtu the virtual world, or, or even if you're in the room today, if you want Christ in your life, you want to become a part of the church of the living God, we offer him to you. We offer him to you today. He's yours for the asking. Man, woman, boy, or girl, by letter, by Christian experience, by baptism, you can come. Amen. If you're virtual, just type it in the, in, in the chat box, comment section. And just simply say, I want to be saved. I want to become a part of the church of the living God. We'll reach out to you. If you're in this room today, you can come down the aisle. Amen. The opportunity to be saved is yours. Man, woman, boy, girl. If you want to become affiliated with the Noah's Ark Missionary Baptist Church, it's a good flock to fly with. Amen. God bless you. But I can't wipe away the tears.